On the weekends, we give people opportunity to watch the message in two different ways, and you get to decide. You can choose to watch the message-only version, which is what this is, or if you want to watch the music, the prayer, and the message, why don't you click on this button and it'll take you right there. Today's message is all about the Holy Spirit being a part of our life, touching us, empowering us. I think today's message is going to bless you. Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray that wherever you are, that you are being blessed. Today, I want to talk about, I want to talk about how do we face the world that we're in? And the scriptures are pretty clear about what we should be doing in our life, about how we should be calling out to God in such a way that touches our life, that changes our life exactly where we are. Many people have been writing to me of late about the church and in particular about their children, about their families, about the fact that their, their families are so far away. Someone recently wrote to me who was in their 90s and said, you know, my, my children, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren don't go to church and they have no interest in it at all. And, and isn't it interesting that grandchildren are being raised today with no association to church whatsoever, many of them not being baptised, uh, many of them not even brought anywhere close to what a church is like. The world is changing. And what does it mean? Uh, there, there seems to be a darkness that's coming upon the earth where people's ears, where people's eyes and where people's hearts seem to be closed to be able to hear the voice of God. How are you and I called to respond to that right now? Are we meant to live in fear? Are we meant to live with a sense of defeat in our life that, that there's nothing we can do? The coronavirus has seen churches closed all over the world. And as some churches in some places are reopening, many people are noticing that those churches are not filling again. They're not, they're not filling again. People are not coming back. So, so what are we meant to do? I meet some people who, who themselves are so panicked by their children, their husbands and their wives being so far from God that they are not sure what to do. Well, the Bible gives us some pretty clear instructions as to what we should do. But also church history teaches us that there are certain things that we can do to call upon God in times like this. Today, this message is, uh, for want of a better way of saying this, uh, I really feel like I have a burden on my heart today. A burden on my heart, like a weight, a conviction, something that I'm carrying within me that, that I feel that I need to do. And I want to share that with you and I want to invite you to maybe be part of that if you feel, as you listen right now, the Holy Spirit speak to you in your life. Now, we know that Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father. Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father. And when I go, it's good for you because the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will remind you of all that I said, but the Holy Spirit will also teach you new things. And when we understand the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't represent himself or come and make himself the main guy, but rather, in a sense, points consistently to Jesus and consistently to the love of the Father, to Jesus and all that Jesus did to win us access to God and to eternal life and anything that, that was a barrier to us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will give you power. The Holy Spirit will, as we know, will give, bring life into the world. The Holy Spirit will animate our spiritual life. The Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. The Holy Spirit will purify us. The Holy Spirit will give us wisdom. But, all, and all, but on top of all of that, the Holy Spirit will give us power and the Holy Spirit will give us gifts to be what we can't be ourselves. And therefore, you will begin to see a certain kind of fruit about our life, a certain kind of produce that we produce in the kind of people we are and the way we're called to live. And when we look through history, there have been these moments in time when the Holy Spirit has fallen upon the earth anew, afresh, and that has caused almost like a revolution in the church. And sometimes that's come when the church has been facing great persecution, difficulty, where there's been this godlessness or secularization that we see right now, when people are turning away from God, where there is this blocking of the ears, this blocking of the heart, this darkness over people's eyes, where they can neither see nor feel God in their life. And those are exactly, it seems to be, the fertile soil 
for groups of men and women through history who've got together and have started to say, what's this about the Holy Spirit? And what did the Holy Spirit do? And what would happen if the Holy Spirit was to do that again in our life? What would happen if that was to happen now? Recently, I just moved into a new home and and I went next door. Rosemary and I went to our next door neighbor. We saw them out the front. We went over, introduced ourselves, And I said to them, I'm going to give you my phone number. I'm going to give you my phone number so that if ever you need anything, you can call me. And they said, good idea. We'll give you ours. And I said to them, you know, you never need the phone number until you need the phone number. Something happens in the middle of the night, someone gets ill, something, something occurs and you need someone. And by swapping phone numbers, I've found many times through all the years I've been alive, it's only been a few times, but sometimes, thank goodness, the neighbours had our phone number because they've had an emergency and we've been able to help or vice versa in the middle of the night. And, and, and the reason I'm calling this call the Holy Spirit It's because I think in a sense we're living in emergency times. I think we're living in a time and an era of crisis. And and I believe that when I look at myself and my gifts and my talents, I'm so limited in what I can do. I realise that I need and I think we need the Holy Spirit to fall afresh upon the earth. The scriptures are replete in the book of Acts where the Holy Spirit is mentioned so many times. And if you've heard me talk about it, people often say uh, it shouldn't be called the Acts of the Apostles, the book of Acts, but rather the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that we see is that the Holy Spirit come and spoke. The Holy Spirit come and empowered. The Holy Spirit came and counseled. The Holy Spirit came and comforted. The Holy Spirit came and broke through. The Holy Spirit came and gave power to people's lives. And I think we're living in an era like that. And, and, and Jesus encouraged us to call out to the Holy Spirit. Someone said to me the other day, when they heard that what I've been talking about of late, they said, are you allowed to do that? Do you need to get permission from someone? Do you need to get permission from someone to ask that, if, that the Holy Spirit would come and fall afresh upon the earth and fall upon us? No, you don't. It's, it's your right as a Christian to invite the Holy Spirit into our life. Now, we know that God is in the world. We know that God is with you exactly where you are. We know that God being three persons in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is right where you are right now. But then there's that special releasing of God in the Holy Spirit into our circumstances and into the world. And so I'm convicted very deeply that 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 we need a release of the Holy Spirit again in the earth. Because to be honest with you, I'm good at lots of things. I'm just not that good at fixing the world's problems. I'm just not. There are so many things I can't do. So many things. Uh, I, you know, I can't grow hair on my head, as you can tell. I, uh, I need to lose weight. And I'm someone who struggles with dieting. How many times do you hear me talk about that? And purely because I lack the discipline to do what you need to do to be able to lose the weight that you need to, to do. I, and, and the other thing too is I keep finding food that I really like. I know no one else is like me, but I know that I am limited and that, and that you know, uh, I need God in my life in so many different ways. And I believe that today in our world, we need the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the key ingredients when I look back upon all of the times through history where God has done amazing things, it would appear there's always been a group of people, a group of men and women who've come along and have a burden on their heart. Something begins to weigh down them where they begin to say, you know, uh, we need something beyond us. We need this Holy Spirit who came in and changed those apostles who were that frightened group of people in that upper room, that, that changed the way they thought, uh, they thought, they acted, that they seemed to go out completely different, bearing a different fruit in their life than even when Jesus was on the earth with them. And what you, if you look through history, what you begin to see is a group of people a group of people who who begin to cry out to God, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come upon the earth. Holy Spirit, come into the institution of our church again and refresh it. Come into the lives of people and change them. Come and put power and gifts and talents and abilities and strength and renew your people on the earth. The issues that we face today will not be addressed by more intellect. Intellect is good. It's not, going to be, it's not going to be addressed just by turning up to church every week. And I'm not saying that we should not. 
It's going to be addressed by us, a group of people coming along, carrying a burden on their heart, saying, Holy Spirit, will you fall afresh on us? That seems to be the key ingredient. I was talking to Dr. Alan Shrek, who is from Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio, someone who's been a great blessing to me, someone I met a number of years ago. He's written a number of books on the Holy Spirit and uh, someone that I have a lot of admiration for. And I was talking to him during the week and I was sharing with him that I have this burden on my heart to, to, to call people to pray that the Holy Spirit would uh, fall afresh, this burden to call people to pray around the world. And, he, and I said to him, you know, when I look back, I said, I see different things. I said, what do you think it is to you? What, what's the key ingredient to God coming again? And he said, he said, the key ingredient, Bruce, is this, is expectant faith. It's the expectancy that when we begin to pray, that when we begin to ask the Holy Spirit to burst through into the world, to burst through into people's lives, to burst through into circumstances, that the Holy Spirit will. The expectant faith and expectancy, an expectancy. Now, when we look back and we ask the question, what was common to past times of the Holy Spirit visiting the, the earth in this special, special way? when things changed dramatically, it seemed to be because there was that group of people, that men and women in their own life who began to carry a burden that says, I'm going to call out to God. I'm going to call out to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to, I'm going to ask and I'm going to ask and I'm going to ask and I'm going to wait and I'm going to wait and I'm going to ask and I'm going to ask and I believe I'm going to see and I believe I'm going to see. Uh, and we need to cry out to God in the midst of all of what, we, what we're doing. We need to cry out to God. Now, Jesus gave us an excellent example in his, in his ministry life on the earth. Jesus gave us this excellent example of what he did. Jesus was always busy about doing ministry. He was always busy about ministry. And I could find numerous passages in the Bible that I could read to you where Jesus all of a sudden he's busy doing and then all of a sudden he takes off from meeting the needs of which there's more needs to meet and he goes up and it says he climbed a hill, he went off to a lonely place and he spends time in prayer. And what we need right now is a group of men and women, older or younger, who will stop and say, in the busyness of all of the activity of my life, I'm going to make time for prayer. I'm going to make time to come before God and to ask God to come because we see Jesus even when there was more people to heal, more demons to cast out of people, more people to feed. Jesus walked away and said, hold it. And he'd go away and he would spend time with his father. Even though there were needs, he'd say, stick with your need. Continue to suffer a bit longer. Continue to struggle a bit more. I need to go and spend some time with my father. And he would go and he would spend time with his father. And right now, there needs to be a group of people who have a conviction in their heart. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Now, I want to have a look at a passage of scripture in the Bible from Luke chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 5. Uh, it's a famous passage. Many of you would have read it before. But have a look at this on the screen. Luke chapter 11, verse 5. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. The first thing, the first thing that I want to say to you is the very first thing that we need to do if we want the Holy Spirit to come upon the earth is number one, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to come before God in prayer and commit to being diligent in prayer and to setting aside time to walk away from the things we have, to walk away from even the important things we have and to say, I'm going to pray. 
And if there are some of you who right now in your heart, as you hear this, you begin to feel that burden, that fire within you, that heart within you that says, I need to pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon the earth. If you are feeling that right now, the very first thing you do need to do is to make a commitment to pray. Now, the thing that I've discovered, I wrote a book about it. The thing that I discovered about it when we make a commitment to pray is we have to make a decision to sometimes change the things we're doing in our life. We have to make a decision. I'm going to go to bed a bit earlier so I can get up a bit, uh, a, a bit earlier. I'm going to do it when I come home from work. I'm going to spend my lunch time you know, that I normally go off and do something else or look at YouTube or I spend some time somewhere else. I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to spend some time in my life coming before God and saying, God, would you send your Holy Spirit? God, would you send your Holy Spirit? God, would you send your Holy Spirit upon the earth? God, would you send your Holy Spirit upon the earth? Would you send your Holy Spirit? Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to come before God in prayer. The second thing we need to do, as we just read in the scripture, we need to come, we need to come and we need to persevere in prayer. We need to persevere in prayer. The man comes to a friend, he knocks on the door. He said, listen, I've had someone come over. Can you feed? And, you know, and, and what we read in the story, you know, he wants some bread, but, and his friend won't give it to him because he's friends, but he does because he's persistent. Now, with God, we can nag God. We can nag God, and I'm not talking about nagging. Nagging is droning on over and over and over, but persistence is continually bringing our need before God and saying, God, I can't do this if you don't. God, if you come this will occur. God, I'm asking you to come. I'm holding this need up for you. I'm holding up our world. I'm holding up our family. I'm holding up our church. I'm holding up our circumstances. Holy Spirit, would you come? And to keep that before God and, and, and say, God, I'm dependent on you. Because when we persist, what we effectively are doing is two things. We're worshiping God because we're saying to God, I can't. And we're saying to God, you can. You're saying, I can't, but you can. And worship is understanding the greatness and the glory and the majesty and the magnificence of God and who we are in relation to God who is creator and we are the created. God is everywhere I'm here. God is through time, <laughs> just in this time. God is everywhere. And so when we come before God and we acknowledge his greatness and we acknowledge who we are, we effectively worship God. We persist we persist and we persist by bringing it before God, right? Just like this man persevered in, in, in saying, listen, will you, you know, please, I, I need some bread. I need some bread. He persevered. He did not give up because he did not see. He didn't give up because he didn't see. Our persistence declares to God our openness to God. Our persistence declares our openness to God. Also, we know that sometimes God doesn't answer our questions straight away. I wish he did. I wish God answered things that I asked him for immediately. But so, and so in other words, we wait. And as we wait before God, God does a work always in us. Because God is always drawing us to him. God is always converting us. God is always asking for a deeper surrender of our life within us. And so we are always, 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 always always patient in our waiting as we can persistent in our asking knowing that God's perfect time is the perfect time it is the perfect time and so we come before God in prayer we come before God in persistence and then we come before God and we listen we come before God and we listen we listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks within us that says, keep going. The voice of the Holy Spirit that says, I'm here. The voice of the Holy Spirit that says, put your mind on me. The voice of the Holy Spirit that says, don't look to the left or right. Don't look at the darkness in the world. Don't look at the people that are leaving. Put your eyes upon me. And why does the Holy Spirit lead us there? Because the promise of the scriptures, if we read in Matthew, it says, you know, when, when we have needs that we should seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is added. What God is looking for is a group of men and women that will look at him. That will not look at their circumstances, but will look at him. 
We'll, we'll place our eyes upon him and said, in you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. In you I trust. Come Holy Spirit. Thirdly, or fourthly, I've forgotten the number I'm up to. Uh, the, 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 when the Holy Spirit comes, our attitude to asking is so we, we, can't, we come in prayer, we come in perseverance, we wait, we listen. Fifthly, fifthly, is that when we come, we come not telling God what to do. When we ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon the earth, we don't say, Holy Spirit, well, I was part of this when I was younger and it really worked for me. Oh, Holy Spirit, this is what happened in the past. Do that. No, no, no. What's required right now of us is to read the scriptures, is to come before God in prayer and to say, Holy Spirit, do what you will do. You see the need in our world. You see the need in our families. You see the need in me. I'm not asking you to do what you did 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. I'm not asking you to do what you did 100 years ago. I'm not asking you to do what you've done in the past. I'm asking you to do, Holy Spirit, whatever you deem at this point in history and here in the 2020s that you would do what you need to do. I let go of my preconceived ideas. I let go of what blessed me in the past. I let go of what I know and I say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. And finally, when we come before the Holy Spirit, we need to come before the Holy Spirit and we need to say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, it's okay if you don't use me. I'm not asking you to fall upon the earth. I'm not asking you to do something fresh because I get to be part of it. You may be just putting on me the burden to be a person who prays for the release of the Holy Spirit in the world that will change everything. And you don't see me having a part to play in that. And that's okay. I'll just do my part and call out to you. You may choose to raise up other men and women, and that's okay. I don't want to put any dictates upon you. I don't want to tell you how. I don't tell you how you have to choose me. All I'm saying is the world is desperate for you. All I'm saying is what I've seen in the scriptures and what I see in other people uh, and see through history and in other people is that when a group of people come together and they call out to you that you work, that you work and that you break forth in the world and you change the circumstances in the church, you change the circumstances in believers' hearts and you change the circumstances in people who are struggling to believe or do not believe. My friends, we need to come before God for those of us who, who feel the burden of the Holy Spirit right now, who feel a prompting to pray. And we need to set aside our preconceived ideas. We need to set aside the way we, what we think should be done. We need to stop telling God what to do and say to God, whatever you choose to do, that's fine by me. That's fine by me. We need to come before God right now and we need to say, Holy Spirit, come, fall afresh upon the earth. Renew the earth. Renew people. Renew our church. Renew, you renew the church communities around the world where people are. Do something afresh. And we, Lord God, are just calling out to you and our hearts are open. For some of us, that will be the hardest thing. Because right now there are some of you who've said to me, oh, I think praying of the Holy Spirit is good because back in the 80s, this is what the Holy Spirit did. And back I read a book about what happened in some time past. That's what the Holy Spirit did. No, no, no. And I'm saying to you something different. Let it go. Let go what you think God should do. And let God do what God wants to do here, right now, in 2020. Allow the Holy Spirit to fall in a fresh way upon the earth. Well, if you're listening to me today and you think to yourself, I feel, I don't just feel that this is a good idea, but I feel some conviction about this right now. Why don't you write to me at this email address on the screen? Write to me at this email address on the screen and I'll send you some additional stuff. I believe, I believe in my heart what God said to me is, you know, it'd be better to have five people who have a burden 
for praying that the Holy Spirit falls afresh upon the earth, upon our church, upon the darkness that seems to be blocking people's ears and hearts. I feel like the Holy Spirit saying to me, it's better to have five people with a burden for that than five million people who go, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, re I reckon that'd be good to do. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. And have no conviction, but just think it's a good idea. Because right now, we don't need a good idea. We need to feel and know the calling of God upon our life that says, Holy Spirit, come in power upon the earth. If you feel right now, if you feel that you want to join me in praying for the Holy Spirit to fall upon the earth and do it in whatever way the Holy Spirit wants to do it, write to me at this address and I'll send you some stuff. And together, I'll join you in praying that the Holy Spirit would work afresh in our world. If you're a student of church history, this is not a new call. It's not. It's not a new call. And it's the right of every Christian to call upon the Holy Spirit to break forth in the world afresh and anew. Sometimes that's done on massive scales. Sometimes it's done on smaller scales. But to all of you, wherever you are around the world, join me. I feel a burden for this. I feel a conviction for this. I feel this is what I must do. And I'm inviting you, if you feel that conviction, to join me. I'll send you some stuff. And together, let's pray that the Holy Spirit would fall afresh upon the earth. I have people that I love deeply who are so in need of God in their life. And for all I know and all of my study and all of my words and all of my TV shows and presentations and everything are never going to be touched by me. For all I know, I'm never going to reach. They need God. And how does God work in our world? He works through the Holy Spirit, who is God. The Holy Spirit is needed to touch people. The Holy Spirit is needed to solve the issues that we face today. I cannot do it. I need God. And if you feel that you're like that, then join me. And together, let's pray that the Holy Spirit would fall as it did that day in Pentecost, when that 120 were in an upper room and they, they were sitting with that expectation of what Jesus had promised, that the Holy Spirit would come and would remind them of what Jesus, the Saviour, the Son of God, who had died and risen for them and set them free from everything, that the Holy Spirit would come and remi remind them of all that He said, and that the Holy Spirit would come and teach anew, afresh things to people so that they could hear Him, not just with the ears of their mind, the eyes of their, of their head, but rather the ears of their heart and soul and the eyes of their, hear, of, of their heart and soul. If today you hear His voice, do not harden your heart, but open your heart and mind to the Holy Spirit falling afresh upon the earth. Join me. Pray with me that God would do a new thing on our earth. Loving Father, I pray today that you would convict those who should join in prayer. And even if it's just one person, just one. Lord God, may we call upon you that you would come and you would have your way, Holy Spirit, in the earth, doing a fresh and new thing, Holy Spirit. May we not have any sort of preconceived idea. May we have no conditions, but the condition purely being that you would come. Our hearts are open. Our minds are ready. Our lives are laid bare. Come, Holy Spirit, to us. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 and following. And it says this, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. This is a fabulous passage of Scripture. I want to ask you if you would support me in proclaiming the gospel around the world and taking this message of the love of God to people. The truth is we can't do this. I can't do this 
if you don't stand with me. And I want to thank so many people that do. But have a look at this passage of Scripture, what's happening when you give. It says, He who supplies seed for the sower, it's God who supplies the seed for the sower. And bread for food, it's God who does that, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. What it's saying is that God will increase when we sow into the kingdom of God, God will increase what we can sow. Certainly in Rosemary, in my life, that's been absolutely true. The more that we have we have blessed people and blessed the church, the more that we have experienced blessing in our life. And somehow the more we've been able to do and God has looked after us over and over again. And it says, and will increase the harvest of your righteousness and will increase the harvest of your righteousness. What's righteousness? Righteousness means to be to be standing in a good place, in the right place with God. And so just as much as God supplies more for us to be able to give, at the same time, God also increases our standing, our right standing with God because of our heart turned toward God. And then it goes on and said, and you'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity you'll be enriched. The Bible promises us that we are blessed when we give. Now you can do what many people do when it comes to church. They hear that the church and the ministry, ministries have need and they think, well, I'd better help out. And, and that's good. And that comes from a good heart, no doubt. But the truth is something far more spiritual is taking place something far more spiritual, that there's almost like the miraculous hand of God I've experienced in my life, where the more I've been able to give, the more God has given me to give. And then it has changed my heart and my standing before God as I become more dependent upon Him for all that He provides to me because He is the giver of all things. And then it says, you'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity. God enriches us. Something deeper is happening within us when we give than just the fact that we're giving away money and even have that sense of, well, I'm a good guy. I'm a good girl, aren't I? Look at what I've done. No, no, something deeply spiritual is happening. We're being blessed within ourselves. Rosemary, my wife, was only saying to me yesterday, have a look at all that God has given to us because we have tried to live generously according to the Scripture, not just giving because people have needs, but in keeping with the way that we were designed in the Kingdom of God to live. I want to ask you if you'll help me. The truth is we receive mail and calls from people all over the world because this message is able to go out and to be able to touch the lives of men and women and change their lives. I call everybody who gives a faith builder because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build faith, belief in God, in people. And everyone who gives you a part of the ministry just equally as important as what I'm doing because together we're the body of Christ. To our faith builder partners, the people who give on a weekly uh, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly basis. To you, I just want to say annual basis. I want to say to you, thank you so much because you make it possible for us to be able to be confident that we can step forward and expand the proclamation of the gospel. The truth is I can't do this. I don't have the ability. I personally don't even have the resources to make it happen. But I want to see you blessed and I, and I pray that people who hear the gospel will be blessed. All. Please stand with me. Uh, as I say, I can't do this if you don't help me. Let me pray for you as we conclude. Loving Father, I want to thank you today for everybody who can hear the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord God, that people would recognise that this is not just about, about helping out. This is about right living. This is about, Lord God, experiencing your blessing in our life, experiencing the glory of God in us as we live generously and seeing the miracle of God working within our lives, blessing us in, the, in whatever way God does because our hearts are transformed when we give. So Father, bless us today. Lord, bless everybody as we take this message of the Holy Spirit and we implement it into our life. And so Lord, I pray that as people either go to this address on the screen or they go to the Give tab, that right now, Lord God, that they would experience and encounter You. Thank You for being with us today in all the things that we have done. Amen. Hey, thank you for being with us. I look forward to seeing you next time. I pray you have a wonderful time until we meet again. Why don't you share this with someone else? And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.